Hi, yeah. What's on? Welcome back to the channel, guys. So today, I thought I'd get out nice and early, go out for a bit of a cruise, go grab a coffee, and while the weather's good, just uh, enjoy the bike a bit more. I thought we'd go for a little blast on the B3306, really nice little coastal road, and just give my honest opinion on the verses. I've had the bike now two months, I've put 1200 miles on the bike, and I've got a pretty good idea of, you know, what it's like now. So I thought I'd just give you guys more of an in-depth review on the 2022 Kawasaki Versus. Shall we go? Noob mode activated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I just said, I've owned this bike now for two months. I've put 1,200 miles or just over 1,200 miles on it. And it's been wicked. It's been faultless, to be fair. I've had no issues. I've, I've, I still feel like I've made the right decision. And it's been great. I'm uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying this bike. So I'm gonna dive straight in with the pros. First one being power. So this bike it boasts 65, 70 horsepower on paper. It's ample amount of power for a touring bike. I feel like all these other bikes, you know, the KTM Super Adventures, the GSs, all these big 1200 cc bikes. I feel like it's a bit unnecessary for what a touring bike does for me I feel like this is kind of where it needs to be I think this sort of power you know it's ample enough for me as a novice rider it's plenty enough for me to get to grips with the motorbiking world it's not overly powerful but it's not slow most of the time it's just going to be me on the bike anyhow me and then when I've loaded the bike up with all the rear pannier set so weight wise there's not a huge amount so I'm not compromising on the power that much because I only weigh about 13 stone and then what you're putting on the bike when you go touring about 20 kilos worth of stuff maybe depending on how long you go power wise I think this is perfect cool he was happy second pro is the tyres so with this bike they come standard with the Dunlop D222s now I haven't ridden many, you know, bikes with different tyres and whatnot, but all I can say about these ones are is that they fill you with plenty of confidence. I've ridden it pretty hard in the in the dry and in the damp, you know, greasy roads, and it never really seems to budge. You do feel like you can push it and come out of corners fine. Ah, oh, very good. Very good. I kind of want to do quite a bit of, not full on off-road, but a bit of green lane in, tracks. You know, if there's, a, if there's a dirt track that goes off somewhere up into the hills, I want to be able to do stuff like that. So I'm kind of thinking I might look at 50-50 tyres, just so I've still got that confidence on the road as well. So I think the next pro to this bike, which could either be a pro and a con, depending on you know your budget, but it would be the price of the bike. I paid just over 10 grand for this bike with the GT package, which is kind of mid-range pricing between its rivals. Um, and then obviously you start getting higher over the tree. You've got the KTM Super Adventures, the GSs, the Triumph Tigers, all new, you know, you're looking at 15, 16, 17 grand plus. But like I said then, with the con aspect to this point is equipment you know obviously with this you get the GT pack which you have the handguards the USB ports the sat nav which again is super good um, you get the bigger screen at the front 
and you get the three piece pannier set for the rear luggage the only thing that i didn't get is the heated grips with the summer coming up i'm probably not going to need them but as soon as the winter comes and i want to get out on the bike when it's dry i'm going to get them put on if you're going to do it right you may as well have everything haven't you so i'm going to get them put on how many pros is that now is that three two i don't really know how many i'm going to go through to be fair there's quite a few it's just a cool little bike so another major pro to this bike is the comfort so obviously being a touring bike you've got that upright position which is complemented by the seat now this seat i'm not joking i would probably put it in my own house it is so comfy it is super comfy i did a bit of a jank up to dartmoor the other week which is in my last video and i sat on the a30 for a good two and a half hours it was absolutely fine everything from the seat to the riding position you know obviously you're upright your arm you're not putting the weight over your wrists your legs aren't cramped you know everything about these touring bikes is comfort you know you haven't got the weight over your wrists you're not on a super bike you're not hunched over or tucked up you know you're upright your legs aren't cramped you're not extended they're not cramped right up so for me being five foot seven this bike does feel pretty good and the seat height as well that when you stop i can flat foot it i mean an absolute short ass that i am that's quite good because i went up to try one of the tigers in plymouth and without adjusting the seat height and the suspension i couldn't get flat footed so this just comes as it is to find a bike that the seat height is already perfect for me ideal uh, what have i spoke about god i've got the memory of a goldfish uh oh yeah so next pro of the luggage system it's unbelievably simple to take on and off and to use it's literally one key one bolt and they slide off what kawasaki have actually managed to do is they've built the luggage racks as such into the frame of the bike and they've got ha you know handy little carry handles on so you can literally hold them like a like a suitcase so when you're going away you haven't got to worry about carrying a geek box into the hotel you literally carry it like a bag so on that that side of thing it's unbelievably easy right where are we to here a minute Oh, oh, it's attached to the back of the wagon. <laughs> I was thinking, Christ, he's hanging onto his ass a bit. I'd be hellish if that was me driving the caravan. <laughs> oh, I've missed this bike. I've not been able to use it for a few weeks. Long story short, my garage went bang. Well, it didn't actually go bang. The garage door just went kaput. So I've not been able to open it or close it. It's just nice to be back out on the ground. Why is everyone just pulling out on me today? I don't really understand it. Is it dickhead day or something? Now, for the cons, which there aren't really too many in it, and they're probably just nitpicking to be fair. But heading back to my point on equipment obviously you get what you pay don't you so with this you obviously don't get any of the driver aids or any of the you know fancy computer stuff all of the wheelie control and all that stuff like that but you know you, you get what you pay so that's just me being picky if i wanted more technology i should have gone and bought one with it all on and spent 20 grand shouldn't i but I didn't really want to justify spending that i couldn't really justify spending this to be fair but i wanted a new bike so i got it pockets not so deep when i walked into the uh, kawasaki dealership that's below that way <laughs> i only went in for a cup of tea and a browse after quite a quick talk with myself decided it was a very good idea to just sign the paper 
and buy the last one they had in stock. <laughs> oh, mother went mad. But we all work hard for our money, don't we? We've all got to have these things, so what does it matter? What do you mean you bought another bike? What's happened to the other one? She doesn't mind, really. Next con. Again, it's just nitpicking because they are what they are. I think you'll probably get it with every bike, but vibration. It's not horrendous. The actual riding of the bike, you don't get much through the bars or the pegs. At high speeds, you could notice it a little bit through the pegs, but it wasn't unbearable. It was fine. You don't come off the bike feeling like you've been rattlesnaked, you know? Doing the maracas or whatever dance it is. Oh, I do believe I've just gone down to Lance End without even realising. Ah. I wonder if she'll just... Have I still got to pay £2? Or can I just turn around? Bollocks. Hello. I'm just turning round. I completely forgot I was even coming here. Awesome. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Well, at least he found that funny. <laughs> what a knob I am. Oh, sorry about that, folks. <laughs> us so where was I yeah vibration so it's not horrendous but I've noticed that when you're driving along you can probably pick it up every now and then on the on the cameras that this you know the the actual dash it vibrates quite a lot and it makes makes a fair bit of noise and it's not the end of the world I think while I'm on tours and stuff I'm gonna have my uh, freak on rigged up i'm gonna have music playing it's not gonna be the end of the world nothing's gonna fall off but it's not the end of the world it's just that's just me being picky i think but actually riding the bike the vibrations are, are quite good you don't come off it feeling like you've been you know thrown for a tumble dryer sorry what other cons are there There's not really a huge amount I dislike about the bike. It's not really picked up on anything it does wrong or struggles with, to be fair. As like a mid-range touring bike, it's it pretty much ticks all of the boxes. For solo touring anyway. I mean I suppose another con you could you could be picky and say when you've got it loaded up with luggage or, or a passenger. But you can't really use power as an issue because half the time you're going to be touring on your own you're not really going to put much more than 20 odd kilos on the bike are you let's be fair the tent and stuff they don't weigh you know they don't weigh fuck all do they and again if you wanted the bigger bike you'd have gone and bought the bigger bike so i can't really use that as a uh, con else i should have just gone and bought a thousand shouldn't i if that was my mindset Oh, he's getting braver today. Cornering like I never do usually. What's happened? Where's Tom gone? Ooh. Must have found some spare bollocks in these pants. Oh, it stinks like shit. I'm really struggling to think of anything else I dislike about this bike. Oh, no, I've thought of another pro. The looks. I think the way this bike looks is probably one of the prettier Taurus. I'm obviously going to be a bit biased because I've bought one. But when you look at other bikes like the Triumph Tiger and, and the KTM Adventures, I just think the front end looks a bit weird on them. Whereas this is really sharp and it, it looks quite mean. But you look at the KTM Super Adventure, for instance, and it's just really, I don't know, kind of like futuristic as such. 
I, think, I mean, don't get me wrong, lovely bike, but mm, I don't know, just something about it. Oh no, I thought of another pro. The fog lights that you get with the GT package are insane. They're so bright. Like, I reckon I could sit on the cliff out there and I reckon I could do Morse code to boats miles out or I could command ships like a lighthouse. They're so bright. Before I finished my last job, I was driving home in January and it was proper dark. Proper dark. How can it be proper dark? Of course it's going to be proper dark. It's night time, you idiot. It was night time. And... I thought I'd give them a bit of a try out, see what they were like, and oh my god. You literally light up the, it, it, they're like street lamps. You literally light up the entire road. They're insane. So that's another big thumbs up from Kawasaki. The, the standard lights that you get on the GT pack, they're nuts. As you can probably tell, the pros massively outweigh the cons. It really is just a great all round bike. And if anyone is thinking about buying one, or not sure, Go and test ride one, because I'm pretty sure you will like it. You know, everyone I've let have a go on it, they've all turned around and gone, it's actually really fucking good. So, genuinely, you will not get bored of this bike. You will love it. You know, without spending stupid amounts of money, you know, second-hand one. I would honestly, if you can find a low-mileage one, go and buy it because they're not designed to be thrashed so whoever would have bought it you're not going to get a abused model you'd be very unlucky i think you know they're not designed for it so i think if anyone buys one of these or a touring bike in general they're going to be quite a sensible person you know they're not going to rag their tits off it they're not going to be out abusing it every ride like this one for instance okay yeah back there you open them up a little bit you never really hit the rev limiter you're never giving it full bean bags all the time so if you can get, you know, a low mileage, newish one, you're laughing. I only bought a brand new one because I'm a bit of a snob and I like new things, but I work every month and I earn more, you know, I earn more than I spend, so logically I can afford a new bike. But yeah, if anyone is um and iron about buying one, I would 100% say go and buy one. I just think they're wicked. The pros outweigh the cons all day long. Oh, just got a fly in my eye again. Screen don't really do much, does it? That's another con, I think. The standard screen that you get with this is okay. You get quite a lot of um, wind protection, but I've had to put this little extender on the top, which, to be fair, was only a cheap one. I'm probably going to get a better one. Stuck behind Digger Dares now, look. Fucking hell. It's always something. Oh, look at the size of that bugger. You don't want to ride into that, would you? Whoa. I'll tell you what, I've got this vlogging setup on point. Got my four rigged up to the bike plugged in, so she's constantly on charge. I've got this one plugged into a bloody USB port in my shoulder, so this one never dies. Very nice. Oh, I'm gagging for a coffee now. And you lot are probably bored of me bimbling on about this bloody bike. But I love it. I love this bike a lot. <laughs> that was probably the worst Welsh impression I've ever done. But I love this bike, I do. <laughs> oh, I just love bikes in general, I think. Just got a bit of a dirty affair at the minute with motorbikes. They're like a drug. I'm addicted to the motorbike drug. Could be worse thing to be addicted to, I suppose. Heroin or crack cocaine. Ooh, this is nice, isn't it? Lovely view. Going right. Oh, pasty. No, it's only half 11. I can't have a pasty yet. Well, a bit of chicken. 
a bit early for chicken still, isn't it? Uh, do a bit of an A30 blast, I suppose. motorway action there look 70 odd miles an hour 5000 rpm you're cruising all is well with the world i'm gonna go marazon for a coffee might even have a slice of cake because who doesn't love cake I need to cut down on cake. See me leaning like a new, like newborn biker. Newfound confidence. Ah, Jordan's calf. There's a few more bikers here, look, they've all got the right idea. Oh look, a Triumph Tiger. Oh, I do bloody like them bikes to be fair. Right team, well, I'm going to end the video here I think. Unless any of you want to watch me eat cake. I highly doubt thanks for joining and uh, if you've liked what you've seen give it a thumbs up and a subscribe goes a long way and I hope you see you all in the next one ciao babies